This is CBS. Live from the Broadcast Center, this is Channel 7 Eyewitness News with Karen Stanek, Weather with Marty Dimitri, Markets with Ron Hendren, and Sports with Chuck McPheeters. Good evening. Northeast Missouri police officers spent the day combing the area between Hannibal and New London for a suspected murder. been aware of it before. Uh, we'll let them know what services, uh, if they're not receiving them now, they, they'll be entitled to. And uh, for those commercial properties, uh, the letters will advise them of their obligations regarding collection of the uh, municipal sales tax, the one cent purchase tax, um, and licensing obligations that they and requirements that they may be subject to as a result of the annexation. The city is now looking at some property on the eastern end of Quincy that may also be subject to the same annexation law. Mike McPeters, Channel 7 Eyewitness News Update, Quincy. Coming up on Eyewitness News Update, we'll tell you why this is one Monday that some people in Pittsfield looked forward to going to work. And in Quincy, there's news of a medical merger. Details when we come back. So long, Sincor. Leaving Rexon. Bye-bye, Bassy Grand. Hello, Scepter. You outperform Syncor and Lexon with better weed control and better crop safety. You control weeds like conifer and velvet leaf all season long to eliminate the need for Bassigran. So for better broadleaf weed control this year, incorporate new Scepter in the side. Scepter gives you sure, safe, season-long control. corn grower is looking for weed control this good. But control is only part of the story. From the moment corn germinates, Lasso herbicide stresses it less than its leading competitor, allowing seedlings to grow and develop faster. Full season control and less herbicide stress add up to bigger yields, a fact that's been proven in thousands of on-farm tests. Lasso, less stress, more yield. When every dollar counts, Lasso counts for more. of Channel 7 Eyewitness News has been brought to you for 25 years, a quarter of a century, by First Midwest Bank, Quincy. Now that all the hoopla on car loans at 5.9 and 2.4 and 0.0% financing is starting to fade, it's nice to know that First Midwest Bank is still here with quick, convenient, and hassle-free car loans. With an excellent rate on both new and used cars and trucks, and financing available up to 48 months, it makes sense to deal with people who are going to be there when your next car is ready to be purchased. First Midwest Bank, Quincy, Mendon, and Hancock County, members FDIC. Close to 20 jobs lost a year ago are back in Pittsfield, and that's because there's new life in a longtime area company. Eyewitness News reporter Steve Feldy has the story. <laughs> with a snip of the ribbon, the new Bergman Meatpacking Company of Pittsfield began operations a year after the old firm folded under financial problems. Mark Shepard, a relative of the Bergman family and two out-of-town investors, engineered the reopening. It's been a five-month process, but as you can see, it's all falling into place and just couldn't be happier. Eighteen people are back on the payroll with the new company. Most of them were on the payroll of the old Bergman's firm. Sue Rush of Pittsfield worked for the company six years before it closed last January. She's surprised and glad the firm is back in business. After 
a year, you know, I, I was kind of hoping that it would open, but then I didn't know after it was that long. <laughs> and, but I am glad that, that it opened back up. And Joy Circle of Griggsville has faith that her new boss, Mark Shepard, can make it work. I think he can. He's gone this far. I think he can go the rest of the way. Shepard, too, is confident, but he knows the challenges, which he says, begin immediately. We're starting off in a slow time of the year, and February and March is usually a slow period of time for us. So that's the biggest thing, is getting through February and March. We the original founder of the Bergman Meat Packing Company, 84-year-old Richard Bergman, was on hand for the ribbon-cutting ceremony. He had some advice for Mark and his partners. While the market may have changed since the company began in 1946, some things haven't changed. Get in here and just work hard like we always did, and stay right with these customers and, and uh, put out a good product and away we go. A recipe for success? Many people are counting on that. Steve Feldy, Channel 7 Eyewitness News Update, Pittsfield. Missouri Secretary of State Roy Blunt wants the state's franchise tax for small businesses eliminated. Blunt says he'll seek the support of Governor Ashcroft and the General Assembly for that proposal. The franchise tax now raises about $3.8 million a year for the state. The General Assembly this year will be considering a complete revision of the state tax code. Governor Ashcroft says Missouri needs more money to combat illiteracy among adults. The governor says $1.2 million in the state, or million adults rather, in the state have less than a high school education. Up to half of those may be functionally illiterate. Ashcroft says a survey indicates about $350,000 will be needed to meet increased demands of adult basic education programs during the current fiscal year. An employees union is contesting the new no-smoking policy of the Illinois Public Health Department. But department officials say the two-month-old policy seems to be working. The department has banned work time smoking at its offices across the state, except in designated smoking areas. A spokeswoman says smokers have closely followed the policy, which is designed to give non-smokers some fresh air. The American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees says the ban violates its contract with the state by changing working conditions without negotiations. Two clinics in Quincy are gearing up for the future. The Quincy Clinic and Physicians and Surgeons Clinic are consolidating their resources to form a new company. That new corporation will be called QP&S Clinic. Its administrator says the change will help both clinics better serve their patients in the future. Bye. I guess have to rub it though. The new company will focus on, um, on uh, retention of patients. It will um, uh, focus on uh, new services for the area, uh, expanding our market base, um, and cost containment issues, which are uh, very popular in all business planning. As a long-term plan here by the two clinics putting their resources together, uh, I think that will um, help develop the Quincy area as a uh, regional health care center. Sullivan says no staff changes are expected because of the consolidation. He says that change actually took effect January 1st. A Hannibal boy is still in serious condition after falling from Lover's Leap. 13-year-old Charles Patton is in St. Mary Hospital's intensive care unit tonight. Police say he was climbing from Lover's Leap with his brother and a friend when he fell 20 to 30 feet. That was Sunday afternoon. Police say he had severe facial cuts. Next on Eyewitness News Update, Bill is in the Weather Center with news of a change. And with the weather we've had, it can't be a change for the better. Details when we come back. Now that all the hoopla on car loans at 5.9 and 2.4 and 0.0% financing is starting to fade, it's nice to know that First Midwest Bank is still here with quick, convenient, and hassle-free car loans. With an excellent rate on both new and used cars and trucks, and financing available up to 48 months, it makes sense to deal with people who are going to be there when your next car is ready to be purchased. First Midwest Bank, Quincy, Menden, and Hancock County, members FDIC. This portion of Channel 7 Eyewitness News has been brought to you for 25 years, a quarter of a century, by First Midwest Bank, Quincy. This is January 5th or April 5th. Isn't it nice? It it's feels great. terrific. It's Considering it was January, it was nearly an ideal day. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Temperatures are kind of holding tonight, and that's what we want to talk about, really. We get into January, and we expect our temperatures to be at least 10 degrees colder. But uh, for right now, nearly the same spots as they were at 6. We're looking at 38 Broadcast Center, also Hannibal. Baldwin Field is 37. The uh, humidity, about 73%. 
And we have then the wind. We've been uh, watching also the wind chill a little tonight. That's maybe most serious problem. Wind occasionally will go to 17 or 18. And for right now, let's put the average around 15 out of the southeast to the south. The barometer was quite a bit higher today. It has been falling slowly here during the evening hours. And as we get to the serious nighttime, we're showing at 29.95 and still falling. It is in the tri-state area tonight. When we talk about temperatures that are above normal, we look and find the upper 30s. We went to the middle 40s today. 45 Broadcast Center also into the middle 40s of 46 for the high at Hannibal. 23 the morning low for Hannibal. We had 26 at the Broadcast Center. 27s were reported in southeast Iowa. 24 Kirksville, Baldwin Field. So all in all, it uh, really wasn't a bad morning when we expect more to be in the upper teens to around 20. Another great national map, that 22 for Bangor, Maine is the cold spot. Kansas City was 44 at 6 o'clock. That gives you an idea of the uh, very pleasant reports that would be from darn near every station. If you want to go down into Florida, they may complain about a 60. New Orleans is probably complaining about a 44. Still, for the winter time, we continue to be quite pleasant. Here's where we're getting our help. We have the air that's overriding everything at the current time, but an awful lot of precipitation. A major winter storm is out west. We have this help taking that uh, milder air all the way up into Minnesota and Wisconsin tonight. Now, as the jet stream has been picking up the moisture today, you can almost follow that track of clouds right there. Now, that's the noon hour. Here we have the jet stream starting to move just a little bit, still picking up a lot of moisture and feeding it in to the Midwest. Now, from 6, we come tonight to 10 o'clock. Well, we've talked about increasing cloudiness as part of the forecast. We've had variable cloudiness tonight. Great many open spots so that uh, if you can go outside, you'll see a lot of stars twinkling. But we're just kind of in this waiting pattern right now to see what happens with precip. And we've just picked up some moisture on the Iowa-Missouri border. We'll say that's Lamoni to uh, right now west of Kirksville. It is supposedly a rain area, area of showers. All this scattered activity that is out west tonight is mostly snow or frozen precipitation of some form. Go down into Florida, some pretty good thunder shower activity along the eastern coast. For the uh, Midwest right now, as we zero in for a live color sweep, we're not picking up any precipitation over by Kirksville, but it's out there tonight. And it could dissipate or there could be some sprinkles in our extreme northwest portion. It is right now with the clouds that we have, no precipitation to talk about. So we can take a look at the maps. For the noon hour, we had high pressure and low pressure in the front out west, and the two lows about to get together. For six o'clock, there were all kind of warnings out. And the two low pressure areas were working in tandem, providing a lot of moisture, plus the jet stream now was picking up moisture too out of Mexico. And from six, we'll come to 10. And we have all kinds of weather advisories. Now, if you'll just take that front all the way down into Texas, there are storm warnings along with it. Could be much of anything. Uh, traveler's advisory to a winter storm warning to a winter storm watch. The weather advisories are for winds, too. Then we get into the snow areas. That little warm front right there so far is said to be responsible for collecting enough moisture to deposit a foot to a foot and a half of snow in some areas. Plus, it's just getting started. Now, those are the words of the National Weather Service. The weather watches that we have, or advisories, for Minnesota back into South Dakota are for late tonight and tomorrow. Now, what about tomorrow? We are looking at a front expected to be right down through the center of Iowa by this time tomorrow night, if not sooner, and then coming into the northwest corner of Missouri. It's that front that's moving towards us with some moisture. The National Weather Service insists that the fronts, or the lows that we're back in here, will be in that position tomorrow night. Now that's the core of the center, and the precipitation is expected to be to our north. So that's probably the best news. We do have increasing cloudiness as part of the forecast. Middle 30s for lows tonight. Tomorrow, quite mild to the upper 40s, and we'll put a chance of showers in the area with mild temperatures. For Quincy and Hannibal, we'll add the wind right here. And what we come up with tonight are southerly winds of 10 to 20. Now for tomorrow, we're looking for a 20% chance of showers. And the uh, south winds of 10 to 25, they'll be gusty, but look at that high again in the upper 40s. The uh, 
possibility for precipitation tomorrow night will lead us into the showers changing to snow flurries. Now remember that system is going to be far to our north. We could lose all track of this and may not get a, well, a flake. And tomorrow night's low in the upper 20s. Then it's a chance of snow flurries on Wednesday. Once again, a storm system far to our north. The high to be in the low 30s. In the extended outlook, we're into this first week of January. We should have a high that uh, is in the upper 20s, not in the upper 30s. But we do get colder towards the weekend when we go down and have a chance at the teens on Saturday. And there's a little chance of precipitation that we see for the rest of the week after we get through what's in store tomorrow, tomorrow night, and on Wednesday. That's the weather, and there'll be more news in just a moment. In the land of Dairy Queen. At Dairy Queen, an American original, our homestyle double burger is on sale for just 99 cents with not one but two big patties that look, cook, and taste like homemade. Double thick, double juicy for just 99 cents. Why, that's the biggest double burger for less than a buck I've ever seen. The 99 cent homestyle double burger sale at Dairy Queen, an American original. <laughs> Keep your budget in the black with Crown Shoe Rack's huge semi-annual Red Dot Sale. Save up to 70% on men's, women's, and children's shoes, plus getting your second pair of shoes or handbag at half price. Many women's and children's shoes only $5, 7 or $9. Handbags priced from $3 and men's shoes from $10. Buy one Red Dot item and get the second one of equal value or less for only half price. At Crown Shoe Rack in Jacksonville and in Palmyra, near Avenue Fashions and Crown Discount Center, Highway 61. Thanks for coming. You bet. Well, what do you think? I don't know. What do you think? I wouldn't mind saving a little money on herbicide. Me neither. It's cheaper than dual or lasso. Performance sounds pretty good, too. Yeah, what do you make of that guarantee? I want it to work. That's the best guarantee. I know, but I mean, it sounds like this is one company that's going to stand behind their product. You think so? Full service, self-service, whatever way you go, go Wareco. Wareco service stations offer quality gasoline at competitive prices. Of course, you save money when you pump your own gas, but at Wareco, the difference between self-service and full service is just a few pennies a gallon. Regardless, you save every time you fill up at Wareco. Pick up your favorite snacks and dependable Valvoline motor oil, too. Quality and price, money-saving tradition at your nearest Wareco service station. Service isn't just a word at Wareco. Interesting situation yesterday with Quincy College and Northeast Missouri State playing a pair of double headers yesterday. Kind of an unusual situation, isn't it? Right, yesterday and today they had uh, two games at uh, Memorial Gym yesterday afternoon mm -hmm. and uh, two games tonight at Pershing Arena in Northeast. And the reason? Wow. You got a couple of teams up from Texas, Midwestern mm -hmm. State and West Texas State, and may as well get them a couple extra ball games in while they're up here. You know, they got to make, make the big trip anyway. So they uh, set it up. Now, Quincy and Northeast did not play each other but they each played in the other's arena, and uh, it's it's something that I think could catch on. Could be a lot of fun uh, if, if they keep this up throughout the years. Good. Quincy College, uh, unfortunately, came up on the uh, downside oh. here. Maybe it was too much to expect. Could the Hawks win three in a row against a team like West Texas State? And the answer tonight is no. The Buffalo's just too tough for the outmanned Hawks, although the Hawks did play tough. Hawks dropped their ninth game of the year. Mike Overby leading the Quincy scoring with 17 points. The QC falls 65-54. West Texas State, by the way, just this year, dropped down from Division I. So they are an outstanding ball club. They already beat Houston this year. Second game of the doubleheader in Kirksville. Midwestern State hands Northeast Missouri its eighth loss in a row. 69-60 the score. Midwestern uh, held on to the ball in uh, the last minute or two. And uh, Northeast had to foul, so they ran up the score a little bit. It was a little bit closer than that. Uh, Northeast now 2-9 and nine on the year. Eric Hansen had 14 points, and Northeast plays Umsel on Wednesday. High school action being dominated by tournament time. This is from the Highland Tournament, Scotland County in white. Everything goes right for Tom Shelley's Tigers. There's Jerry Reese with the bucket off a nice behind-the-back feed by Bob Johnston. Eric Varner provided some scoring punch for the Putnam County Midgets, but most of the buckets went Scotland County's way. Tigers cruising to an 80 to 59 win. Nice tip in right there. 80 to 59, the final first round action. Girls play, Clark County's Rhonda Soper with the turnaround against Scotland County. The Indians dominating. 
They built up a 12-2 first quarter lead, and the Indians are the top seed in this tournament. You can see why as we check the scoreboard, 64-36, they trounced Scotland County. In the earlier game today, mild upset as Putnam County had been seeded number five in the tournament. They beat the number four seed, Kirksville, 33-22. In boys' play, Scotland County, easy winner over Putnam County, as we said, 80-59. In the third quarter, the Highland boys' top seed in this tournament have doubled Palmyra's score. Palmyra with the number eight seed, 50-25, to with about a minute left in the uh, third quarter. From the South Shelby tournament, the Macon boys are unbeaten this year. They trounced North Shelby 68-50 to in girls' play. Macon over South Shelby, 55-46, a score that you won't see on your screen. Still going on at halftime, Monroe City boys leading Knox County 29-23. Elsewhere, the Warsaw girls beat Dallas City 61-52. Dorothy Myers of Pittsfield had 17 points to lead the Lady Sockies to a 47-44 win over a good Brown County team. Pittsfield now 10-2. More girls games. Beardstown beat Havana 65-18. Perry had four girls in double figures. They beat Payson 52 to 37. In boys action, Fort Madison Aquinas over West Burlington 57 to 45. Lou Henson says Michigan State has some of the best shooting guards in the country. Vernon Carr, after all, scored 42 points against BYU earlier this year. Daryl Johnson is even better than that. The Spartan guards gave Illinois all they could handle tonight in Champaign, at least for the first half of the game. But the Illini's Glenn Blackwell helped key an Illinois comeback. There's a three-pointer. He picked up the slack when Tony Weisinger was out of the game. There he goes in for the nice layup between Blackwell and Kenny Norman. Illinois roared back to claim a Big Ten win. Uh, Blackwell, by the way, 24 points. Let's go to the scoreboard. 79 to 72 over the Spartans. And Iowa over Wisconsin, 78-63. This game much closer than that score would indicate. Wisconsin was within six points from the majority of the game until their two big men got into foul trouble. And uh, one other game, uh, Iowa State uh, beat Texas Arlington 103-73, to and Missouri over St. Bonaventure 83-62. to We know Father James is interested in all the Bonnie scores. 83-62, Mizzou the winner there. The Levenex of Western Illinois beat Central Florida tonight. Last second turnaround jumper by Greg Akers. The Knicks had half a dozen players in double figures tonight led by Tony Hickman and Jeff Klingler, 15 and 14 respectively. The 79-77 win puts Western's record at 7-3. Western Illinois assistant football coach John Smith is headed east. Smith has been named the defensive coordinator for Eastern Illinois University. The Panthers' new head coach was also named today. He's Bob Spo, who's been the offensive coordinator at Purdue the past two years. Of course, he's the guy that developed Jim Everett into the great quarterback he is. Another coaching news. Former Maryland head coach Bobby Ross, the new head coach at Georgia Tech. Now, just two weeks ago, Ross quit the Maryland job to take an assistant coaching position with the Buffalo Bills, but he quit there today. He said the Georgia Tech job was a lifelong dream. John Elway says he will be ready to play on Sunday when the Denver Broncos meet the Cleveland Browns for the AFC title game. His coach says he's not so sure. Elway sprained his ankle in yesterday's playoff win over the New England Patriots. Coach Dan Reeves says Elway may not be healthy by Wednesday, and Reeves' standing policy is no practice Wednesday, no start Sunday. But Elway says he'll show up for practice on Wednesday, take a snap, and see what happens. And uh, even if he doesn't practice on Wednesday, if Reeves sticks to his plan, no practice, no play, no start at least, uh, they'll probably bring somebody else in for one right, play, and then go. that's it. By the way, St. Louis Blues le losing. Third period of the Capitals 5-4. Okay, thanks, Chuck. We'll be back in a moment. Ron has the markets next. Checking today's markets, local hog prices followed a lower national trend today. At Central Missouri Livestock Auction at Mexico, butcher hogs were weak to 50 cents lower with an extreme top of 47.40. At Adams County Livestock Buyers, the trend was a dollar lower, a base price of 45.50. Prices on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange were higher for live and feeder cattle and pork bellies, mostly higher for live hogs. On the Chicago Board of Trade, prices were lower for corn, wheat, and oats, mixed for soybeans. Widespread selling across the floor pressured grain and soybean futures. A moderate increase in country movement and weaker basis levels placed additional pressure on corn contracts. Cash grain prices at farmland grain at Hannibal and Louisiana, corn down four to $1.37, beans up a penny at 4.79, Milo down three to $1.31. 
At Quincy Soybean Company, soybeans down two cents to 475. At Ursa Farmers Co-op, prices at Meyer four cents lower. For corn, down to $1.34. Beans up six cents to 470. And at Cargill at Meridosha, corn down four cents to $1.48. Soybeans up three cents to 490. That's a review of today's farm market information. I'm Ron Hendron reporting for Channel 7 Eyewitness News Update. At Hy-Vee, we owe our success to regular customers like Vicki Bargainquist. Vicki says she hears lots of price claims. Well, at Hy-Vee, we aren't just making claims. Our prices are low. Because we're employee-owned, our people tend to work harder to help keep our overhead and prices down. That's why people who regularly shop Hy-Vee save money. You can, too. Hi, this is Ronnie Millsap inviting you to join me on 24 Hour Country 96. All your favorite country music in stereo, 24 hours a day, on Mid-Missouri Superstation, KWWR 95.7 FM. Hi, boys and girls. I'm Greg Holman. Join me evenings at 8 o'clock on Country 96 for great music, TV trivia, and the dusty disc. We've got the best country in the Midwest on the Superstation, KWWR. <laughs> You don't want to miss out on the biggest Chevrolet sale in years. It's Ronnie Green Chevrolet's 1987 New Year New Car Celebration with 1987 New Car Savings. Like the 87 Chevette, only $87 per month, or even better yet, 87 SN pickups for $2,100 down and only $87 a month. Or an 87 Cavalier, only $187 a month. It's a one-month-only 1987 New Year New Car Celebration from Ray Green Chevrolet, the dealer that cares in Jacksonville. That's Eyewitness News Update. We thank you for tuning in tonight and hope you'll join us again tomorrow. Good night. Good night. KHQA-TV, Channel 7, Hannibal Quincy.